Hello fellow Clashers, it is Kairos time and welcome to a balance breakdown. Today we're going to be covering the specific cards, what changes are going to be happening to them, as well as why Supercell is most likely making those changes. We're also going to talk about the meta shifting, specifically covering the viability of old combinations and new combinations, as well as talking about the best cards to use in the new meta, including win conditions, support cards, and defense cards. The wait is over guys, today Supercell announced that they're going to be doing some balance changes on August 11th. As you're watching this right on time, that's going to be tomorrow, so we're super excited about that, some really great changes. Now I know a lot of you are going to be watching this video after you've watched the balance change videos from other YouTube channels, but I wanted to make sure at least include them quickly so that you guys can get a full understanding of how everything is going to be changing here in the near future. Obviously the Night Witch is getting nerfed really hard. She's receiving a reduction in DPS by 9%. Her range is being decreased by 11%. The time that it takes for her to spawn her bats is being increased from six seconds up to seven seconds. And the number of bats that she spawns on death is going from three down to two. These are a lot of big nerfs. Each one of them is going to influence things. And I think that this is a really good change for the meta because she has completely shaped the way that the entire meta has been in Clash Royale ever since she first came out. I do know that a lot of people are saying that she's going to be totally useless. I don't think that she's going to be useless. I think that she's going to find a good situation in a couple of different types of decks. Next is the Graveyard receiving a duration decrease from 10 seconds down to 9 seconds, which decreases the amount of total skeletons by 2. And this is a, a kind of a slight nerf, um, but I think that it's a good nerf to the Graveyard. The Graveyard has uh, had a lot of people talking about how it's random number generator is just making it so that it's just kind of an unfair card. I think decreasing the number of skeletons that are going to be spawned total is going to help make it so that this is a little bit more of a skilled card to use and is going to have to be used in combinations with other cards. No longer are you going to be able to just do graveyard cycle as easily um, unless you really build a deck around that. The Electro Wizard is receiving a tiny nerf as well. It's still not going to die in one shot to fireball and as such I still think that he's going to be very usable but he's not going to be able to replace the Night Witch in every single deck, which is something that a lot of people are going to be having to do with their current decks. The Battle Ram is going to be receiving an increase in the time it takes for it to charge up, as well as an increase in the time that the Barbarians are going to spawn after it has lost its hit points. I honestly think this is the perfect nerf to the Battle Ram, and it's actually what I suggested in my last tier list video. I think the Battle Ram is definitely going to be still usable. I don't think that it's going to be as easily used in a lot of situations like it is right now. It's going to be a more skilled card, and I think that's really good for the game. Lastly, we have the Heal spell. Its duration is being reduced from three seconds to 2.5 seconds. This is a really great nerf, and I'm really excited about this because it's going to make the Heal spell a more of a skill type card. It's not going to be easily used by every single player, but you're still going to be able to use it in Three Musketeer decks if you really want to, and if you have the skill to be able to pull it off. It's going to require a deck being built around it, as well as really great timing. Next we have the buffs. You'll notice something very critical here. The, all of the buffs in here are very defensive cards. And that is huge because Supercell in the past has said that they want to try and create a game where offense is a little bit stronger simply because that's a lot more fun to play. Nobody wants to play to a draw. That's just not as fun. But I completely agree with these buffs because I think that the meta has just been too offensive for a little bit, especially with like the addition of the Battle Ram and uh, the Night Witch as well, um, and even the Bandit. They're very offensive cards, um, and they're, it's a lot easier to get value on, on offense. Let's go ahead and talk about, first of all, the Ice Wizard. The Ice Wizard is going to be receiving a, a damage increase, but a hit speed uh, increase as well, which is a nerf. As such, he's overall going to do less damage, but he's going to be able to get rid of bats and skeletons in one shot. This is really huge for the Ice Wizard. I think this is exactly what he needed to really find his place in the meta. I think he's going to be very strong, and I think he's going to be very usable. Um, once again, very defensive. Then we have the Expo and the Mortar, which are going to be receiving a spawn time reduction from 4 seconds down to 3.5 seconds. This is really huge for the Siege meta, and I'm excited about this because for a very long time we've had control and we've had beatdown and the triangle of control beatdown and siege has kind of been missing a side to it and this is going to allow expo and mortar players to be able to actually get their foot into the door i don't think that this is going to be 
Um, it's such a big buff to these cards that they're going to that we're going to be overwhelmed by defensive gameplay. We also have the Dark Prince. The Dark Prince is receiving a buff and that is so exciting. Um, a lot of people have been calling for him. I still don't think that he's going to be um, super useful, but I think that this is going to allow him to be able to find a spot in some different types of decks. He's receiving a damage increase of a 6% as well as a, a swing speed um, decrease, which is a buff, down to 1.4 seconds. So that is very great. We also have the Mini P.E.K.K.A., which is receiving a damage increase of 4.6%. This is going to further differentiate the Mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Night Witch. And the Mini P.E.K.K.A. has been on the sidelines for a very long time. You rarely see him in the Legendary Arena, and and you almost never see him in grand challenges. As such, I think that he's going to be very useful um, because he's going to be able to one-shot musketeers and wizards and ice wizards um, and even the electro wizard now that the electro wizard received his hit point reduction. And the mini pack is definitely going to be very usable. Then we have the bats that are increasing the number of bats from four to five bats. Uh, I am actually not 100% sure how this is going to influence things. They may have some value, but if you take um, the elixir per number of uh, units spawned, they still don't quite have as much value as the skeletons. Now they can fly, but you get what I'm saying. In order for them to be equal to skeletons, they would have to have two elixir for six. And I don't know if five is going to be enough to actually really bring them into the meta, but we'll see. The fact that they can fly really can change things a lot, so we'll we'll see what happens with the bats. Because of these different changes, here are the shifts that I expect to see. I expect us to see a huge decrease in the Night Witch, and she has been shaping the meta for a very long time now, and that's going to influence a lot of different things. I also expect for us to see less bridge spam, less bandit battle ram combinations. I think that they'll still be useful. I'm planning on playing them because I I love the playstyle. I came up with it two or three months before it was ever popular, and I really love it. We're also going to see a decrease in graveyard usage because it's going to be more of a skillful card to try and use, um, as well as a decrease in Three Musketeer heal. Um, I'm excited about this one because uh, the decks that I play specifically got countered by Three Musketeer heal, but I do think that the Three Musketeer heal, there are going to be people that are really good at that that will be able to make that work out really well, and I don't think it's going to be completely gone. Lastly, I think we're going to see a decrease in usage of the Hog Rider. The, the fact that the Mini P.E.K.K.A. is going to be entering into the meta uh, means that the Hog Rider is going to have a very difficult time actually landing hits onto the tower because the Mini P.E.K.K.A. does such a great job at stopping the Hog Rider and is difficult for you to clear when you're going on the offense with that Hog Rider. The, some exceptions may be Hog Rider Lightning or Hog Rider Freeze could be an option, uh, but we'll see where that ends up actually taking us. I also see uh, an increase in the Expo and the Mortar, specifically the Mortar in the Ladder and the Expo probably in competitive challenges. I think that the increase of damage for the Ice Wizard is going to allow for the Payfecta to come back. Um, with the Miner, Ice Wizard, and the Princess, I think that's going to be a, a good combination to try and use, especially paired up with the Inferno Tower. I do think we're going to see an increase in Lava Hound decks. Uh, Lava Loon basically took a nosedive when the Night Witch came out because the Night Witch just does such a great job of counting, countering both the ground and the air. So I do think that we're going to be seeing some more Lava Loon, and I think that that's good for the meta overall because it adds some more diversity to it. Also, I think that Spellbait decks are going to take a really good comeback because of defensive cards like the mini P.E.K.K.A. that don't do a good job at countering um, the spellbait type decks. Now let's go ahead and talk about the best cards to use in the new meta. We'll start out with win conditions. I think the Golem, the Giant, and the Lava Hound are all going to be really good win conditions to try and use for the beatdown archetype. I think the Expo and the Mortar are going to be really good options for people that are skilled enough to be able to use it. Uh, they are, I would still say that they're going to be high skill, high reward cards, but they're definitely going to be used by more people. I do think that the Miner is going to be one of the, probably the best win condition for the control archetype. The Hog Rider and the Battle Ram may be, be used a little bit as well, but I think that the Miner is going to outshine them. When it comes to support cards, there are a lot of cards that you can try and use, but I think that these cards are going to be the best ones overall in a lot of different types of situations. I think the Electro Wizard, the Mega Minion, and the Minions all are going to be great in all three different types of archetypes. Next we have the Log and the Zap. I think that the 
choice between these two is going to be very difficult because as Log becomes more popular, I think more people are going to be using cards like the Bats. And as Bats become more popular, I think people are going to start using Zap more. So I think that that's going to help really kind of balance things out. Lastly, I think that the Lightning, Fireball, and the Poison are all going to be really great options. I think the Lightning is going to be good uh, because of the decrease in the Lightning Rod Battle Ram, but the Battle Ram is also going to help try and keep that Lightning in check, um, as well as we have Fireball and Poison that are the, just overall really great cards to be using, both in challenges and in the ladder. When it comes to the best defensive cards, I think that the Ice Wizard is going to be so amazing in there. The fact that he just slows things down, even with his damage decrease, is really going to help out a lot. The, the fact that he's going to be able to help better take care of like minions and things like that, the, the Ice Wizard is going to be very great when it comes to defense. I think the Tombstone is also going to shift more into the meta as cards like the mini P.E.K.K.A. become a little bit more popular and as people are looking to try and counter cards like the mini P.E.K.K.A. Uh, the guards, I think, also will be added into the meta. I think that the guards will are the guards are an absolute amazing counter to the mini P.E.K.K.A. They also can't be cleared with spells and things like that. As such, I think the guards are going to actually find a place in the meta without becoming too strong. Obviously, they are weak to poison, but I, I still think that the guards are going to have a good place here. Um, the Inferno Tower and the Inferno Dragon, I think, we're going to are going to be a really great defenses to use in the meta because the Night Witch is going to be gone, and a lot of people have been using the Night Witch as their primary defensive structure and also as an offensive support, which Inferno Dragons and Inferno Towers really struggle against those, those little bats that are spawning on there. So I do think that the Inferno Dragon and the Inferno Tower are going to be some of the best defenses to be using in your deck, depending on whether you want to be a little bit more defensive with the Inferno Tower or a little bit more offensive with the Inferno Dragon. Lastly, we have the Goblins and the Goblin Gang, and possibly the Skeleton Army, uh, depending on where things go. I think that these will be good options, especially as Mini P.E.K.K.A. starts becoming used more frequently, and also as Skeletons become less of an option against defensive Ice Wizards. Thank you so much for watching, make sure you subscribe for more quality content in the future if you haven't already, and of course guys, let me know which cards you think are going to be the best cards for the future meta in the comment section below. I read every single comment that is posted and I will respond to every positive comment that is posted in the first eight hours of this video. Uh, channel feedback is also really appreciated. In fact, please let me know if you like this type of video and if you want me to do it again in the future. I've been hesitant to do so because other YouTubers are able to put stuff out so quickly, in fact as soon as it gets out, and it's kind of hard to compete with that, but if you guys like the content and uh, then let me know and I can do it more in the future. So you guys are fantastic, hope you have a really great day, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in the arena.